Hey everybody, it's Thursday. I'm Matthew Laria. I want to take a second to welcome you to our Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. We ask you today for revelation of it. We ask you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see the results of it working in our lives. And we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we've been doing a teaching entitled, Making Room for the Word of God. And we've been learning how vitally important it is that you and I make the Word of God a high priority in our lives. Now, let's go back over to Mark chapter 4. And I want to look there at verse 18, which has been our foundation text for the week. In verse 18, Jesus said this, And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word. Now the word choke means to crowd or to crowd out the word. And it, the word, becomes unfruitful. And so Jesus is talking about a group of people here who the word could find no place or had no room in their lives. Their lives were full of a bunch of other stuff. And so there was no room left for the word. The word was not a priority to them. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 4. And I want to look at verse 4 over there in Matthew chapter 4. And on today's broadcast, I want to talk to you about living by the word. In Matthew 4, verse 4, Jesus said this, It's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Amplified Bible says, man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. And so the word of God is what is supposed to uphold us and sustain us in this life. We found out on yesterday's broadcast that the word of God is a key element in our prosperity and in our success. And so friend, you and I, we, we live by this word. You know, one definition I found is that the way a horse lives on hay is the way that the believer lives on the Word. You and I are dependent upon this Word for our sustaining, for our prosperity, for our success in every area of our lives. We live on and live by this Word. And if we are going to enjoy a prosperous life, a blessed existence in this earth, then this Word is going to be at the center of that Because it is what is going to uphold us and sustain us and support us in this life. We live by the Word. And that is one way to live by the Word, or that is one perspective, or one angle of looking at that phrase, we live by the Word, is that the Word supports us, the Word sustains us, the Word is the source of our prosperity and our success. And that is true. Now, another angle to look at this from is that we live by the word in the sense that from situation to situation, we ask ourselves, what does the word say about this? And then whatever the word says about the situation we're facing, we receive that word, we believe that word, we decree that word, we act upon that word. Come on, we live by the word. You know, back in 2020, when the pandemic hit, um, right after it hit, the first service we had after it hit, the Lord had us go to the word of God to find out, well, what does the word say about plagues and pandemics? And we found in Psalm 91 that the word says, no evil will befall us and no plague will come near our dwelling. And friend, this is what you and I should be doing from situation to situation in our lives. We should always be asking ourselves, well, what does the word say about this? You know, when our our oldest daughter, Grace, who is eight now, when she was first born, she was about 10 months old and she still wasn't sleeping all the way through the night. And so we did that. We said, well, what does the word say about this? And we found out that the word says that God gives his beloved sleep. And so we took that verse 
We received that verse. We decreed that verse. We acted on that verse the best we could. And I kid you not, the day that we started doing that, she started sleeping all the way through the night. Why is that? Because we live by the word in the sense that it is the source of our prosperity and success. And it was in that situation. And we live by the word in the sense that as situations arise, we always ask ourselves, what does the word say about this? Now, this is a foreign concept to many believers because many believers do not live like this. They are not running to the word to find out, well, what does the word say about this situation? What does the word say about sickness and disease being on my body? What does the word say about this anxiety and depression that I'm battling? What does the word say about lack in my finances? What does the word say about strife and division in my marriage? And friend, this is how you and I are supposed to be living. Every situation we encounter, the first thing we ask ourselves is, what does the word say about it? Why? Because if I'll believe the word, heed the word, follow the word, decree the word, I'll live by the word, and it will be my prosperity and my success. You know, in John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said this. He said, it's the spirit that quickens. Now, the word quickens there means to cause to live to strengthen or to give life. And so what did he say? It's the spirit that strengthens, that causes to live, and that gives life. He went on to say, the flesh profits nothing. And then he said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, what did he say? Let's, let's go back through that verse again. He said, the, the spirit quickens. It's the spirit that strengthens, that gives life, and that causes to live. But then he said, my words are spirit. And so my words will strengthen, give life, and cause to live. His words give life. His words strengthen. His words will cause to live. And friend, you can have dead situations in your life. You can be in a dead financial situation. You can be in a dead marriage. You can be dead in your, in your mind in the sense where you're experiencing death and, and depression and anxiety and these fear, these things in your mind. Um, you can be in a dead situation where your body is concerned, where you're experiencing sickness and disease in your body. All of these things describe dead situations. But what he's saying is that my spirit and my word will give life. And here's the thing. Any situation in your life, any dead situation in your life where you find out what the word says and receive it and believe it and do it, it will bring life to that dead situation. The word of God, the spirit of God. What did Jesus say? He said, it's the spirit that quickens. My word is spirit, so my word will quicken. And that word will bring life to a dead marriage. That word will bring life to a person who is dead mentally, experiencing anxiety and depression. That word will bring life to a dead financial situation. Come on, it, God's words are life and we live by the word. His words quicken. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says in the easy to, easy to read version, God's word is alive and working. And friend, this word, when received, when believed, when acted upon, it will bring life to any dead situation. Just like it brought life to Grace when she wasn't sleeping 10 months into her life. It brought life to that situation and it gave her sleep. And the word will do the same thing in your life. You know, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17 it says this, so then faith comes by hearing the word. How do we get faith? Faith comes by hearing the word. And then in 1 John 5, 4, it says that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so what does the word do? The word gives us faith and faith is our victory. Come on, no word. If, if you don't have any room for the word in your life, if the word is not a priority in your life, no word, no faith, no victory. 
But as we spend time in the word, it will bring faith to us and faith will be our victory that enables us to overcome. You know, in John 8, 31, Jesus said this, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Friend, the truth of God's word will make you free from anything that you need to be free from. But he said this, he said, if you continue in my word, then you'll be my disciples, then you'll know the truth, and then it'll make you free. Well, to continue in the word, you have to start with the word. And if you start with the word and continue in the word, then the word will make you free. And that's why you and I should always be asking ourselves, what does the word say about this? Why, if I start in the word, I'll continue in the word and the truth of God's word will make me free. What does the word say about this? Because I need faith to overcome it and faith comes by hearing the word and faith is my victory. So the first thing I need to ask is, what does the word say about this? Because that's where I'm gonna get the faith that I need to overcome this thing that I'm facing. Come on, friend, can you see how important it is that you and I live by the word? As you encounter situations in your life, a common practice ought to be, well, what does the word say about that? And that is where we start. And if we'll start with the word, we will live by the word and it will be the source of our prosperity and success. This is good news, isn't it? Now, as we're closing today's broadcast, I want to remind you of these things. Number one, as believers, you and I are to live by the word. Number two, God's words are life to us. They will bring life to any dead situation. And then number three, we always start with the word. And when we start with the word, the word will give us faith that will be our victory. When we start with the word, we can continue in the word and the truth will make us free. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we make a decision today to live by your word. And we're asking for help from your spirit that as we encounter situations in our lives to ask ourselves, what does the word say about this? And Father, we thank you that when we find out what your word says and receive it and believe it and decree it and act upon it, that your word will be the source of our prosperity and success. And we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, don't forget to come back tomorrow for Friday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to close out this series entitled Making Room for the Word of God. We'll see you then.